listening to the Pagan Centered Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest-running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, PaganCenteredPodcast.com. Probably after Christmas. (laughs) Yeah, it'll be up in like the middle of January, actually. (laughs) Not just a little bit after Christmas, you just, just way after Christmas. A lot after Christmas. <laughs> Actually, it's possible with post-production and all that stuff and other fun, funness that it might actually come up right around Easter. <laughs> let's, let's not be that pessimistic. <laughs> I mean, it could just get lost in a shuffle for a while. We'll get better! We promise! <laughs> Than we've ever lost shows in a shuffle ever before. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, this show is supposed to be with that show. Do you realize I, I have a folder named Shit Ah? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Good luck producing that one out, whoever is supposed to be producing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it, it can't be much worse than your altars. <laughs> Yeah, alters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, producing this episode I'm working on makes Gamma a dream. I wish we, I wish there was a Gamma to post produce after this. It's like first you guys should go through no introduction to get rid of the static so you can hear people. You can hear them now, but now you gotta amplify it, and then you find new noises. It sounds funky if you have noise. Produce that. So. It sucks a lot. <laughs> but as long as you can hear what people are saying, they can suck my ethereal dick if they have some static. <laughs> sort of naughty word count? Score? <laughs> the highest naughty word count has to post produce the episode. Gosh darn it! <laughs> Well, considering I'm already tied with Ashley, I'm not too worried. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy pretty soon. So, we're, we're going to have a star foster today, but she's out having important meetings in Denver right now. But this is a rant. Started by a star foster rant. So this is a rant caused by another rant. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> what's wrong with Christmas? I mean, have we, wh- when did we, we on these crazy requiring gift people weirdness? Like, what? what? Where did this whole gift exchange thing get us so crazy to drive crazy in the month of December and bat each other over the head at malls and crap? Oh. Okay, first of all, who the fuck is moving stuff around? Because that's going to be really annoying for someone to post for this later. Sorry. At a moment. I don't think it was me. Uh, by the way, Ashley, thank you for that f bomb. You just no, put yourself up over me. I hate, I hate you so much. That doesn't count. <laughs> I think Scurvy did it just to annoy me into saying something naughty. <laughs> you are a naughty, naughty girl, Ashley. It's not hard. Uh, Does it you count? Nah. I can't even remember what we were talking about. Oh, Christmas. People just love stuff. People have always loved stuff. The only thing better than stuff, stuff, more stuff. I love Black Friday. I love Black Friday. People completely forget how to drive. Hi, everybody. We're just going to block every intersection. I wonder why the Carlisle Pike becomes a parking lot. Don't you realize, people, I have been up from midnight to go to Toys R Us to get that awesome thing that every kid wants this year because that's what the news media told them every kid wants this year. And half yep. the time the kids are like, you talk to a kid, I wanted this, but I heard in the paper you bring you this. And the kid's like, I guess I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted Legos. <laughs> I wanted a box. It's 
they can't get in the big or anything. If it comes in a big box, what do they play with? The box. <laughs> South Walk a cat. Well, there's a lot of people that have... Lie. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people that have this idea that... Uh, um, a lot of sales go on and they can save tons of money things at the end of Christmas. And I'm not sure where it started, but the more you love me, the more you'll spend on me. Like a hooker. If you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no, it's not a hooker. It's a, um... Escort. Mistress. Personal mistress. Escort. It has to be a mistress, because, you know, you can... It all requires, uh, quality on the hooker and the escort. A mistress, if you love her, you have to get her more things. Also, to keep her quiet. I was going to say, to keep her mouth shut, you get her things? Yeah, that's how it works with kids. I'm not going to continue to you, but... Yes. Maybe I should do an innuendo count, too. (laughs) No, 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 because then I'm going to end up freaking doing post-production. I'm not even regularly on this show. (laughs) Don't do a sex count, either, because then I'll still be doing it. (laughs) I mean, my little sister, she's 20-something now, so she's not so little. But I know when we were little, it was, that was kind of the idea that the more that somebody spent on you, the more that they valued you. It wasn't that they got you something that reminded you of them. It's, you are only a good person if you can show how much you love them by spending a lot or, or the, the most things it's it seems to be no longer about getting something somebody something because it reminded you of them like most Christmas gifts I get because there's some interaction that doesn't remind me of with another person rather than well there's three things this one I know they'd really like, but oh. these other ones are more expensive, so they'll appreciate it more. Oh. What? I'm so getting a bag of dog poo from here. <laughs> <laughs> you already know what you're getting. It all works. Well, it also depends how much money you have. I mean, I didn't really... I, I don't know. All, all my, my mother has always said that, you know, all families are different. All how all homes are different, and you, I think one positive thing you can see with pagan families is that a lot of them, or at least broadcasted, that a lot of pagan families will emphasize on crafting. You know, the actual physical handcrafts and 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 things like that. So because there's an emphasis on that, there is an emphasis. I I feel within the growing young young as a young children community and kids grew up with learning that these handcrafted and handmade things and and the time effort are put into show a lot of love. Whereas um not so much so that even even if they're around other children who are not pagan and who want, you know Barbie's shenanigans horror parade, um, you know, they don't necessarily want that because they don't see value in that. They can at least observe the craze for it, but they don't connect with why a child would want that, since obviously there's no effort put into it. Because a child can't necessarily grasp the effort of working hard to get the money to go and buy that. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I mean, I mostly what I've seen with the handmade things is mostly adults. Uh, now, so, uh, whenever you're dealing with brothers, sisters, cousins, that sort of thing, a lot of families will do, um, like, draw a name out of a hat type deal, and that's the person that you make something for, or... You know, make 
make something that you do something like one of my coworkers redid his grandparents' bathroom for Christmas. You know, him and uh, his uncle redid their bathroom. And whereas it didn't actually cost them a whole, whole lot, I mean, the fact that they need, and 